I just wanted to create this video here to help you create your own build and have it be optimized. So this is the community build guide document created by myself and Lucas with the help of Idle Venus, Ferbsol, Onholes Kano, Cryptid Tracker, as well as using the data collected by Cryptid Tracker and online betters. You want to plan your build in advance to ensure you're spending your points efficiently so you can optimize your damage, health, defense, and poise. And if you need pre milled builds to get an, an idea, I would recommend using Cryptid Tracker's Build Planner, which is linked in the sheet. The Build Planner has a ton of pre made builds that you can build, as well as edit, as well as just being a build planner to create your own builds and have it be efficiently laid out. The common build level is going to be 125 for competitive PvP. 139 is the best level for invasions, as that will match with 125 and 150 plus. Then 150 plus is generally going to be where you end around your PvE campaign playthrough. Your starting class is very important for optimization and to find the best starting class you should look at a build planner and put in the stats that you want uh, beforehand to choose the most optimal uh, class because it is going to change depending on your build. However the most optimal class generally is going to be a Vagabond and then it kind of deviates from there if you're not going to be a melee focused build. Um, casting is generally going to be a little different, as well as arcane. Breakpoints and level distribution. A breakpoint is where stats per level point changes significantly. For every stat, um, there's going to be diminishing returns, except for a vigor, which will actually gain exponential returns. This means you should strategically be deciding which breakpoints to go to, to make the most out of your build. For example, if you had 55 dexterity and 55 vigor, it would be an invitation to convert one of those 5 points into vigor, as you might trade off 1% damage for a 5% health increase. It also means at very high levels, it will be significantly better to level faith, uh, to use an armament and body buff, do increase damage rather than pumping your main damage stat past 80. The exception to this is the occult infusion on a pure arcane build. Stopping at breakpoints will make better use of your points. You might not stop at a breakpoint in case specific weapon requirements or for being able to use certain incantations. So for Vigor, every build should have at least 40 Vigor, that is the first breakpoint, but preferably you should have 60 Vigor. Endurance isn't really that important of a stat, unlike Vigor, which is a very important stat. That is because Endurance, you only level for Stamina and Equip Load. Stamina is very generous and has breakpoints at 30 and 50, but you generally don't need to hit those to have good stamina. And equip load is 25 and 60, respectively. Mine governs the amount of FP you have. Its breakpoint is 50 and 60, but you really don't want to go past 38, as that is what the fully upgraded Corellian Tear Flask will fill. Heavy, keen, quality, and occult blood poison are physical infusions, and those breakpoints are going to be 20, 60, and 80. 20 is going to give you exponential returns up to 20. Uh, 60 and 80 are going to give you diminishing turns as you level into those. Strength is going to be the most efficient stat because it has a 1.5 bonus when two-handing, and it also means that the cap for the level is going to be 40 and 54 if you are going to two-hand. Fire, Flame Art, Lightning, Sacred, and Magic, and Cold are going to be elemental infusions, and those are going to have different breakpoints at 20, 50, and 80. And really, uh, for elemental infusions, it's not worth going past 50. For Arcane, the... Auxiliary breakpoints or status breakpoints is going to be 45 and 60. And damage scaling for Arcane is going to be 20, 60, and 80. Casting breakpoints are going to be 30, 45, 60, and 80. 30 and 45 are generally going to be for uh, dexterity and strength as well as Arcane. And then 60 and 80 are going to be for faith and intelligence just depending on the catalyst. For most builds you should have 40 or 60 vigor and then have your main damage stat at 50 or 80. Uh, for elemental and 60 and 80 for physical at or below low 25 to 150 it's generally better to focus on single damage stat rather than hybridizing for the best armament it depends by the game version which is 1.09 as the time of recording this and the answer will change depending on if you're playing pve or pve for pve the best weapons are going to be the dual scavengers curve sword with an occult infusion on an arcane build or the Occult Uchi, if you want to take a look at my DPS tests, I have done those for weapons that should perform well. As for PvP, it would be dual pikes or other dual spears such as Cold Claymans. The best armament for your build 
will be the one that does the most damage for your specific build while keeping you from taking damage in return. I do have a PvP tier list that will be found in the appendices of this document. Scaling is a number that determines how much a uh, given stat is utilized in adding AR. In game, the numbers are represented by letters, however those are inaccurate. You want to use Slugbot if you have Discord for optimal stat distribution, otherwise you can manually uh, check it in uh, different build planners and you can do that by DMing Slugbot. So instead of investing one stat and meeting the minimum requirements of certain weapons you are using both strength and dexterity weapons suboptimally instead of splitting them into two different builds. Uh, to reach the middle breakpoint for heavy, quality and keen will be 60 points in each stat. Uh, so assuming that you start with a wretch, um, for heavy and keen that would be 50 points of total investment, for quality that would be 100. Uh, that is disregarding swearing stats like vigor, endurance, and mind or any other weapon requirements like faith, intelligence, and arcane. As an example, um, if we take a look at the longsword, both heavy and quality, uh, so 50 and 100 points respectively, you have an AR of 495.47 and 558.79 respectively. However, AR is not damage, and for this damage test, I have a defense value of 140 and a damage negation of 30. Damage from heavy affinity, uh, which is 50 points, was 250, with the damage for quality affinity, for which is 100 points, being 291. So that is a 41 damage difference for double the points being spent. Um, so as Lucas summarized, we have a 16% more damage for 100% more set investment when using quality at lower breakpoints, and a 3% 2 more damage uh, for a huge 30 more points invested when comparing Heavy's final breakpoint of 80 to quality's middle breakpoint um, of 60-60. And it makes quality hugely inefficient when compared to other means of getting damage. So Ash of War to have two types of scaling, either projectile or AR. AR will use the AR of your weapon, and that's generally going to be when you hit someone with the weapon physically. Ash of War with projectiles, AOE effects, etc. will be a bullet, and that scales with the default option for the Ash of War. For example, Flame of the Red Mains will be Strength, uh, Thunderbolt will be Dexterity, Black Flame Tornado will be Faith, Glintstone Pebble will be Magic or Intelligence. Special factors for choosing an infusion. Elementally infused weapons will have a higher AR, but they will go through more defense calculations, and they also suffer or gain heavily from elemental or ele environmental conditions like rain or enemies being wet. So you could have a 10% decrease of uh, your damage or 10 or 20% increase, just depending on what infusion you are and where you are. For talisman, you generally always want to use Urchi's favor. Great jar. Only if you need the equip load. Otherwise, Crimson Amber is also good, just for general use. For uh, Sorcery, you want Graven Mass and Graven School. For Faith, you want Flox Canvas and Faith of Canvas. For Melee, you want Shard of Alexander if you're going to use the Ashwar a lot. Curve Sword if you're going to out Guard Counter a lot. Damage Negation and Resistance um, is very good for PvE, but not so good in PvP as they are nerfed. For Max HP, uh, for Situational Talismans, Crimson Amber, Ritual Sword, and Ritual Shield. And at low HP, you have Blessed Dew, Blue and Red Feather Branch Swords. So for Armor, uh, you always want to make sure you have optimized armor, because you can take 10-20% less damage. For PvP and PvE optimized armor, we really just reach the Poise Breakpoint, because uh, that will prevent you from being staggered. For a PvP build, you want at least 75 Poise, Preferably 100 or 101, and 50 or 100 for PVE. And then here's the uh, PVP t list made by me. Um, power stance spears, power stance coated, power stance great spears, serpent hunter, 200 thrusting swords are going to be your bread and butter. Um, anything that's below viable, you really don't want to use, um, unless you find that moose at fun. And the best spears are going to be Pike, Cross Naginata, and Bolt of Grand Sex. Best Great Spear is going to be Tree Spear, Moglin Sacred Spear, and Serpent Hunter. Best Great Swords are going to be Coded, Nobles, um, and Carrions. Best Halberds are going to be Banished, Knight Rider, and Commander Standard. Thank you all for watching, and that's going to be it for today.